Hey everybody, how are you? How are you? Welcome to Behind the Mic with Matt, episode one. We're just going to sit here and chill out and talk a few minutes. A little bit of live streaming, no racing going on. Just talk about what we've seen this week and what a week it has been. Oh my good, 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 good. We go back to smoking tires on Sunday and what an epic event we had down in Daytona Beach, Florida. And coming out of Daytona, we're going to start with smoking tires and what I thought about that particular race on a Sunday night. Um, I was sitting here doing some of the overlay work for this upcoming Sunday when they head to Miami and the Uniformity Tees uh, race down there in Miami, Florida. But we come out of Daytona and we've got some, some good news, bad news, surprising news all the way around. And you look at the running order of course, it was Team SRA coming out of there with the win, and Nick, they're coming home with that one. But you look back through the field. What about Bobby Chaney, man? Bobby Chaney coming home in what was, what, 25th, 26th spot on the evening? Big surprise there out of Bobby Chaney getting uh, getting that finish. And uh, I know Bobby from other leagues, usually a good plate racer. Daytona just did not go his way. And uh, disappointing. And you look down at the team standings. Of course, SRA coming away with a great run. But, man, Texas family, they really fell on their face here at Daytona. They got to make a recovery. I know Reese is my friend, my broadcast partner. But here on Behind the Mic, I'm going to say what I think. Man, they they dropped the ball, did Texas family. And they're not going to get a championship uh, in this series doing that. So, Texas... I think they've got to make a recovery. I was surprised by SRA, one of the newcomer. What about racing aces? Had a top uh, five car back at Daytona. That was a good run for them. Uh, you know, and you just look down the list at some of the guys uh, that, that kind of had a pretty good run. What about JB Motorsports? They come home with a car pretty good. And, you know, that's a two-car team. I think they're going to... You have to really battle to get a, a team championship going forward. The stages proved to be important with all the stage points on Sunday. That was huge. I mean, overall, Sunday was a very exciting night with the opening of smoking tires. And, you know, we go back this upcoming week as well. We had over on Saturday evening, we got the playoffs coming as well for another league that I cover. Busy time for me with playoffs on the way as well. And I think if you look at the playoff standings, and we're going to get over to that actually in just a moment for uh, the WOSCRL series, their playoffs kicking off this Saturday night. And uh, a two-week break for them, and we're going to come back. We're going to go playoff racing. That's going to be cool to see come this Saturday. Get the crown of champion for this one. And we start back again for that one. Another race down in Homestead, Miami, Florida for the playoff uh, opener for those guys. And what do I expect to see here? Well, we take a look as we go over to the playoff points and what we have going on. And we got what? Uh, 13 cars making the entrance. Tristan got in with that whole situation that went down last week. Tristan in. Josh is in. Luke G. Duran, I think he's going to be a big challenge, a big effort for him to get a championship over at the WOSCRL side of things on Saturday night. Now, this is a brand new podcast. It's behind the mic for a minute, and it's just me sitting here Talking to you guys about, well, nothing more than what we do on a weekly basis here with all the great league racing action that we usually have on the channel. But, besides from that, this is kind of a platform for me to just, uh, random thought, right? And we can talk about it. What about Hickory Motor Speedway coming to the service? That got confirmed to come to iRacing. I'm looking forward to Hickory. Um... Really, I'm really looking forward to Hickory Motor Speedway coming out here 
here in a couple of well September we're a little bit out here from Hickory it's gonna be interesting to see how these leagues adapt to places like Hickory North Wilkesboro I know that made the schedule quite a bit did North Wilkesboro when it released now we're looking at Hickory coming out and I think with the 87 cars I know there's a rumor that we're gonna get another 87 out as well I think with all that coming around I think these vintage series are gonna do really well once we get this old school content out here like a Hickory Motor Speedway uh, what about I just picked up today and I don't even know if they've made an announcement I'll go ahead and kind of talk about it what about Thunderstruck their modified series coming to a channel well, we get to see the Thunderstruck series at a place like a Hickory later on down the road. And you might hear some background noise. Kimmy Poo's over here going to watch who knows what. But, hey, it's a podcast, right? Well, oh, well. Anyway, so we're going to do that. And uh, I, th I think Hickory coming with, with the combination of 87 cars, everything we've got on the service, I, I think it's going to be an interesting year. We know rain's coming. At the end of the, probably my guess the end of the year with the season four build i can't wait to go rain racing of course i'll make my return to 24 hour racing next uh week at daytona really seriously at daytona but or next year at daytona 24 hour we'll make our return to the uh oh uh endurance racing of course on other news other than league leagues that i cover I've got to go race the Charlotte Roval tonight, the truck series um, for SRN, and that's going to be a lot of fun. i got to run that, and that will be an interesting event. Has anybody else noticed that The Rock literally plays in anything now? Like, come on, people. Like, why does The Rock need to be in every type of movie known to man? Still here watching Baywatch, and it's got The Rock in it. Like, um, okay. Ask me, she's not watching the movie. She's watching The Rock, not the movie. Yeah, she agreed with that one. But, you know, I think with everything we got going on, it's going to be a fun winter. I know it's summertime. Everything's slowed down. Even myself, I took some time off from a couple of leagues just because with everything we got going on uh, with the ones I do cover now, I don't want to cover too many leagues. And my quality of the product go down and I think I'm I'm doing quality over quantity at this point and I think that's gonna pay off in the long run it's kind of a little bit of a gamble of course we got behind the mat Mike with Matt here that's gonna be another weekly little talk about random whatever stuff that I get to get on here and drop about for 30 20 30 minutes um, but yeah I mean I'm excited for some of the things we got coming up I know the dirt guys they've got some uh tracks and cars and and nonsense going on that's coming up as well uh i think that's going to be a great one and of course with thunderstruck coming with 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 uh with the uh what i would call more short track style i look forward to having that on board getting back to the roots a little bit if we if we remember if we go all the way back to when this channel was created man i started right off the bat right so i started back then and i actually ran a uh a, really the super speedway series we're camping universe that was probably the biggest thing that kind of kicked this channel off back in the day and of course we do have a super speedway series coming to the channel on saturdays as well that'll be running in double header with the uh, with the uh, wscrl to the third season ends of course i'll be racing with wscrl after that so that will be interesting to see but you know we, we look back on on the years that i've been doing this and i talked to a lot of guys behind the scenes and this is kind of my opportunity to talk and i'll open public forum i kind of be got to be careful here because i can really get myself in trouble but you give me an open mic and no script and this could be either really good or absolutely horrible and not entertaining at all but 
I, th I think broadcasting as a whole, since I've started doing it, especially on my side, the amount of uh, effort that goes into each and every show has went up probably, I don't know, tenfold. And I love it. it I love to push the boundaries of what I'm capable of doing. Uh, they're great. There's great broadcasters out there, I think. And, you know, I just try to do the best I can with what I got. I know I'm not the best broadcaster, never claimed to be the best. Uh, I think there's some commentators out there that probably comment, commentate a, whole, a circle around me. But, you know, at the end of the day, it, I love doing it, right? It's, it's why I do it, and I enjoy doing it, it for everybody, right? You know, unfortunately, we've lost a couple of week leagues in the last few weeks for various issues. Uh, and that sucks, but that's kind of part of it, too. And, and it, what makes it hard is when you come into that and you... Uh, You've got friends involved, right? you got to make kind of decisions with the channel. And I think that's the hardest part for me, right? Is It is a passion project, but you also got to make decisions with the channel involved. So there's a lot that goes into it. But on a little bit brighter note, I've got more sim racing gear coming. Yay, spend more money on sim racing. Because that's all, what we all do, right? We spend tons of money on this. Because, A, it's awesome and it's fun as crap. But So, I've got the iFlag pit board coming. And I really don't know what to expect from that. I'm looking forward to having it here. I know I'm going to look at getting the, uh, the regular iFlag as well in the very near future. But the pit board is coming. That's going to be fun for me. Um, and I'll see how it works. See if it helps me out in the actual racing. And if you can hear the TV, she's still over here watching Baywatch for whatever reason. Anyway. But I tell you what, I think it's going to be an interesting uh, couple of months for myself. Uh, I'm really pushing the boundary of what I think I can do with this channel. Right? It's For me, it's now or never. Um, I hope you guys enjoy every bit of it including the podcast and i'm absolutely amazed right now we've got five watching here live for the podcast recording for something i didn't even promote right i did not tell anybody a podcast was coming i shared the link out to the facebook group and uh happy we got five in here and if you'd like to comment man shoot me a comment ask me a question what would you like to talk about because i mean we can sit here and chat about just about anything we can talk about I racing, NASCAR, real world stuff, local short track racing, dirt racing, which I've become somewhat of a fan of. Um, PBR even, we'll talk about bull riding, even though in the I racing community, I don't get a lot of guys to talk about that with, unfortunately. But I, I think for me, I racing the community as a whole. And I, I know. There's some toxic in the community, but I think it's a lot better than what some people realize. Look, you're gonna ha you're gonna have the uh, the crazy people in any any uh, side of gaming or YouTube. Then you meet some really cool dudes, and the partnership that I've been able to make with a lot of guys. You know, you look back, Luke Slug Nuts is up in there. You've got. Uh, uniformity tees now we got camping universe which was where this all started i think the community aspect is is important or even more important than the racing um aspect of everything and, and i sit here and i look back and i think to myself the, the stuff we've done you know throughout the years and and, and people we've met in this community it, it really is special you know the internet can bring so many bad things but at the same time if you're, if you're cool about it you're going to get a chance to meet some great people and i think that's the biggest draw for me to, to sim race it um i'm not gonna be able to go get in a car in real life right that ain't gonna happen but we can get on here and give it a go I've done everything that you could possibly want to do. I've ran 24 hours at Lamar, 24 hours at Daytona, Mount Panorama. Tried to run the Nurburgring. That didn't uh, go as uh, well as planned. If you consider the beat-up BMW a good thing, I, I don't think that was good. And everything else. Let me see something here. 
Because apparently comments are on and I'm not seeing it. So let me see what I've got going on here with the comments. Pop out the chat here. Crow's Nest, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, Crow's Nest, that's going to be great. Yeah, uh, Trekker Flag Motorsports, are you talking about the iFlag kind of being sim apps on a mini screen? Yeah, I think so. You know, and it's, uh, yeah, I think that'll be good with that sim apps deal, but yet, you know, Crow's Nest, man. Oh, man, let's go back in time. Matter of fact, I wish I had a webcam. In there in my closet, about three shirts over, is the, if you remember Checker Flag Motorsports, you remember the Go On Green Crow's Nest t-shirt that came out? If you remember that, I've still got mine in there in the closet. God, that's been forever ago. Unfortunately, you know, we lost Senior a couple of months ago. That was, that was unfortunate. Great guy. I mean, we had some great fun back in the day with, with the Crow's Nest coming on board. The Indy Cars. First time I'd called Indy Cars was with the Crow's Nest. That was a lot of fun. Man, you look back at things like that, and uh, it's just crazy. As crazy as the world gets, right, we, we still have the sim. We still have the racing and all the fun that we had. And yeah, the OSCRL, yeah, guys, you know, it was a blast to call WOSCRL. Just for everybody to know, the split between WOSCRL and us, that was totally mutual decision I made. I wanted to get back on track. They were going to go go ahead and go a different direction. And I'm like, hey, it works out for me. That kind of gives me a spot. However, OP Racing in the Butt Kicker Truck Series, that's going to be kind of a double header there with the uh, WOSCRL for a couple of weeks. I don't do many double header weeks. Uh, because Yeah, I remember this. Hey, David, man, how you doing? David Overstreet, man, it's been a while since I've seen you, man. But yeah, you, you look at it and you go, and this is the thing, right, David? This is a perfect example of what I was talking about earlier. Me, David, some of the guys in here, we all have memories that we can sit here and talk about and relive. And it's all on YouTube. That's the fun part. You can go back and watch it. You know, you can go back and watch where this channel came from with uh, the Crow's Nest. And to be fair, David, back then when I first started, I don't think the video quality was nearly as decent as it is now. I'm not going to say it's good, but it's actually decent now compared to what it was back in the day. But yeah, um, let's see. Let's see. <clears throat> but yeah, it's going to be awesome. So Checkered Flying Motorsports, do you, David, do you have the iFlag pit box? Like, do you own it? If so... Give me a little bit of heads up what I'm getting myself into with this thing. But yeah, guys, I mean, this, the channel to me, and this is me personally, there is a lot of effort that goes into it, even on the note keeping side. I have a binder in there in the closet, and again, I'll have a webcam before long so I can show you guys all this cool awesome stuff that I do have so I've got a binder in there full probably I don't know four inches thick at least of papers five inches or more of old broadcast results uh, remember I know I've got AMA modified uh, David I've got some crow's nest results in there I've got quite a bit of stuff in there But yeah, I've got I've got quite a bit of stuff like that that I can uh, I can show you guys over the long run, and maybe even do a thing where I show people how exactly I get ready nowadays for a broadcast, like step by step the the process of getting the overlay ready and uh, all that stuff. 
what? Alabama, you the goat. I don't think I'm the greatest of all time. Come on now. Come on now. Let's, let's don't get overkill here. I'm, I don't think I'm the goat. I don't think I'm the greatest. Uh, there's a lot of guys. Uh, Rudy Cummings, a great dude. Jo uh, Josh. Ned Lock, uh, White. I had one, but it was hard to see for me. Yeah, I've heard that a couple of times there, Checkered. Um, I I've heard that, and I'm kind of, I got the tripod mount, so I'm going to try to mount it close. I know that it's out there. There's a guy that's making custom dashboards that go across your wheel, but that was a little bit out of my uh, price range when I went to look at them. So I'm, I, I agree, David. I'm kind of worried about how small it's going to be and seeing it. I'll have to play around with where I mount it, I would imagine. Because I would imagine you're going to have to mount it pretty close to see, right? I think you're the second guy that's told me that. I think it was uh, Merck, Jeffrey Merck, that let me know the first time we talked about that. And he said that. But yeah, I mean... No, but no, I man, I, I don't think I'm the goat at all. If if I had to, okay, here's the part where I get myself in trouble on a podcast. Let's rate the best broadcasters in my opinion in the top five we've got. All the guys, the broadcasting buddies, might love y'all. So here we go. On pure excitement level, I have to put Medwalk number one. So I have to go, no, uh, I'm not doing NRL there, Mr. Sox. Unfortunately, I had to take some time off for myself on Wednesdays for a little bit until we get straightened back out, but unfortunately not. I love to delete the series, just couldn't do it. I use an iPad. Oh, iPad. I might try that next. But so, back to my random thought of top five broadcasters. It's not because he's my friend or anything like that. I'm going to have to go Medlock. Catch, you got to put... Okay, this is going to be hard. Medlock on the excitement level. Rudy would be up there with along with Josh White. Probably a dead heat for, for second and third. Just because of the knowledge that those two men have. Uh... So I, I'm going to say, I'm going to go Medlock out of the guys that I know and I watch regularly. Medlock, Cummings, uh, I'm going to go White. Wow, this is difficult. So that's three. See, that top three, man, that top three is so hard to call, right? And that's the thing. Like, I don't even put myself in that bracket. Rudy for graphics. Yeah, Rudy for graphics for sure. Uh, and, and, and uh, David, that, that's what I'm trying to go for is, you know, make my graphics look better kind of in that vein. Yeah, I, I'll give you that. I'll give Rudy for graphics. You know, <laughs> I'm sure somebody's going to share this with Rudy and Josh. But White, Josh White on just being a cool dude, right? Like, I could care less about broadcast quality. That man's a cool dude. So, I'll go white third. So, it's going to be top three. We're just going to do three. It's going to go... I'm going to go Medlock, Rudy, and Josh White. That's my top three. Now, I know there's another kid coming up, and I've got to watch more of his stuff. And he is really, really good, and I've tried to get, wanted to get him over here as well. So, there's my controversy for today. Let's see how many messages I get over the next few hours. Hey, man, what about me? Hey, well, look, it's my personal ranking. I mean, it's hard to rank guys that you're friends with and be objective about it, right? You're trying to be objective to what different, because everybody's got their own knack, right? I've got my own knack. Rudy's got his. Uh, Medlock's got that unbelievable excitement for every show that he does. He's like the dang gum energizer bunny. He could call more races than I ever could. So that's kind of my top three. 
So, uh, chat Lynn, a little bit of talking about running NASCAR. What y'all thoughts? We're headed to Watkins Glen next this week. We got trucks running, Xfinity running, cups running. Gonna be a busy night over in the uh, in the real NASCAR scene. I think that'll that'll be good. Um, that'll be a lot of fun this week to watch. Now, David, I know Brandon, David, you guys. What do y'all think? Do you think we'll ever get a Bowman Gray Stadium on our racing? I know I've talked about it with a couple of guys. Um, I'd love to see Bowman Gray Stadium come up. That would be fun. That would be a absolute blast if we could get the stadium. But yeah, as far as the NRL, man, I, 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 I like the league, Brandon, but like I said, just had to take some time to for my own mental sanity, I I used to broadcast five days, seven days a week, no problem. Anymore, it's uh, getting increasingly difficult to do that. Uh, just because there's so much that I'm trying to do to make everything better, so I can't repeat it as quick and keep everything up as easily as used to. Because, I mean, like I said earlier on, uh, I'm making gains and what I'm able to do but it takes time to do it, so I, I need the extra time to make the broadcast look better for you guys. But yeah, this little series, I'm going to keep going. I want to bring special guests on, uh, league owners, um, and everything like that. And there goes my Facebook. Let's see if I get a message from Rudy or anybody yet. Oh, uh, let's see. <laughs> oh, no, that was the progress for the numbers. Oh, they look great. <coughs> that was for the Saturday night deal, I think, for OP. That's the new recruits. There we go. So, as we're talking right here, you hear me dinging. That's literally an everyday thing of getting more information on leagues. And, uh, I tell you what, since we don't get to do this much, Kim's sitting back here now watching South Park for whatever reason. But, I man, she has to put up with some crazy stuff every day of the week for me broadcasting. We'll be sitting there doing something, and I'll get a message, and it'll be like, yep, I'm out. I got to go broadcast stuff. Literally, the only words that I say to her is broadcast stuff. And then she already knows. She's like, yep, you, you go. No, John. Yep, see, she's engaging. So engaging. Who, who thinks we need to get Kim to call a race? I think that would be highly entertaining. We might as well, right? Get her involved in all of this. What do you think, Kim? You gonna call a race? But why not? Oh, 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 oh. Lawrence, oh, where does Lawrence rank up on your list of top drivers? Oh, wow. Is <laughs> Luke G. Duran the best driver you ever seen? All right, here we go. Let's make more waves with broadcasting. Oh, uh, my top drivers. These are the guys that I don't want to race against because I'm going to lose. Here's where, where I'll go with it. Oh, wow. I'm going to go Jared Kaler, rank number one. I'm going to go Luke G. Duran, rank number two. Uh, Lawrence C., and here's the thing. I hate to say it, but I don't know that Lawrence would make my, my top three as much as I like him. That's tough. I don't think the performance... I mean, he's fast, but he's not got that dominating performance, right? But I can't put Lawrence up there in the top three. And ooh, now, third on back, it's easy for me to go Kaler, Duran. There's a guy that used to run AMA Modifieds at one or what, too. I'd have to dig back on my records. Lawrence should call a race. 
That would probably be one of the highest rated videos that warrants calling a race. I'd love to see it. We might have to make that happen one day. But there was a guy back in the AMA days that ran the Modifieds, and he won just about every week, too, and I, I would have to put him up there. Rick, Logan Hilton. Logan, oh, thanks for drawing, drawing my memory there, David. Well, Derek Gunter. Dude, I, I would put Logan solidly thinking about it on my third, because I watched that kid grow with Extreme Sim TV, right? He, I watched him grow into one heck of a racer. And I still follow him on Facebook. Give me Luke overall level. Hey, they each their own. That's why they're called uh, rankings. We might do something one night, guys. Uh, one Wednesday night when I ain't got nothing else to do. I might compile a list of some of the greatest drivers that I've call, had to, been able to call races with. And put them like a top 10 or a top 20 list. And do like a fantasy draft. We can wreck him so we can get him in the booth. <laughs> hey, that's one way of doing it. Wrecking him to get him in the booth. That, that would be um, an interesting ideal. Wreck Lawrence to get Lawrence in the booth. That's a little... I don't know about that. I don't know about that now. I don't know if Lawrence would go for that. But yeah, Logan for sure has got to be up there. Luke, Luke is a tire saving god. Yeah, he is. He can save more tires than uh, than I can, that's for sure. So guys, let me know if you like the idea of this little podcast sitting around talking about stuff while Kim watches South Park for whatever reason. LG Whaley, I remember LG, yeah. Yeah, 83, man. That boy, he can get it at 83 years old, let me tell you. He can still go get some wins. But yeah, let me know if y'all like this idea of the podcast, maybe getting some special guests on. Uh, I might get, actually, I'd like to get a hold of Junior there and uh, do, uh, do an episode with Junior. That'd be a lot of fun, a lot of memories. But, man, it's, it's part of it, right? A lot of years doing this been a blast and i appreciate each and every one of you coming out here for the podcast episode keep in mind we're all let me get this straight we're off tonight i'll be back tomorrow night with prime grid and, and ready to go jacob warbly i'll see if i can get warbly on the next podcast yeah i can see if i can get jacob on here let's see if we can surprise call somebody tiebreaker man yeah that was crazy right the whole tiebreaker situation forgot yeah two weeks ago they would had a race that was that great bustle michael bustle on the podcast oh uh, we got some ideals um let's see let's go down to my list see if we can hold jared Kaler. Bring it home, Mr. Jared Kaler, while we're alive. <laughs> Brandon, are you over there playing Rocket League? I see you on Discord playing Rocket League. Please tell me you're not playing Rocket League. I don't have to do all. Man, oh man, this is going to be fun. I think Jared's going to come on. I'm going to talk to him here. That's going to be busy. Let's see. We want to get high, Tally. Yep, she's watching Tally on uh, South Park. We'll see if we can get somebody on here. Dynamite duo, yeah, for sure. So, guys, what do you think about uh, what do you think about Hickory coming out? Y- y'all looking forward to Hickory? I 
I think Hickory will be a great, great. Uh, I mean, I'm looking forward to Hickory probably a bit more than I was North of Wilkesboro, to be honest. Let's see if Mr. Kaler. I dang it, I lost my drink and my cigarette. Man, I'm doing. I'd lose my head if it wasn't attached to my body at some point. What in the honey? Boy, well, she's in her better than you, she votes. I'm about to get smacked on a podcast. Oh, that's going to be domestic. Beating on me, guys. She's beating on me. Let's see if Jared Kaler going to answer for us. He said he'd come on here. Let's see. Hey, Jared, you got a copy on it, buddy? Oh. Hello. You, you got a copy on me there, Jared, buddy? Oh, whoa, whoa. We got to see. Hey, Jared, you got a copy on me? Yeah, I do. All right. Hey, buddy. Well, I'm in a little recording a uh, podcast <laughs> here, and your name kind of came up in the conversation. Oh, it did? So we were ranking drivers on... Uh, on my personal ranking best list over here. Mm -hmm. And your name happened to be up there on top of the board with the top three. Oh, wow. I'm, uh, I'm honored to be up there on your, uh, on your ranking system. And, you know, I, I, from your point of view, Jared, what do you think it takes uh, for a guy coming into iRacing like this and, and really be competitive week in and week out? Um, it's honestly going into the official races and practicing in those and like doing those races. That's how I got fast is I just kept doing those official races over and over again. And then, you know, I'd, every time I would join, I'd get into win in with faster people and then I'd learn what they were doing. And then that just kind of built up exponentially over the years. And uh, whether it was like road course or oval, I was just kind of like I was learning stuff that they were doing in front of me and uh, picked off a couple of tricks and try to learn everything every every time I went out there. Yeah, and that's the thing, right? You, you get better over time. Even me, right? I go run. I run a lot of super weight models myself mm -hmm. and, and, and tour type modifieds. And every time you go out there, you're going to learn something new each time, right? Oh, definitely. And uh, I mean, the biggest takeaway is when you go into one of these races is just try and see if you can learn something, you know, whether it's a breaking point, a turning point, you know, when they're getting on the gas, well, anything like just trying to pick up a thing or two is a, right. is a key. Right. It, that's big, right? That's huge. Yeah. Now, uh, my question to you, we, we got the answer that Hickory was coming to the service here before long. What do you think about Hickory coming? You looking forward to it? You think it's going to be fun? Um, what do you oh, think? Oh, yeah. It's always, uh, it's always a blast whenever Irie Singh's able to get a new track, and especially a track that like the Cup Series doesn't really go to anymore. I don't know if they ever went there in the first place, but... Uh, Especially like the short tracks are a lot of fun. Like you said, the super late models are a blast, uh, and uh, the short tracks. I'm sure that'll be on the super late model schedule, so that'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, I think it will be. I think uh, rain coming. That's going to be a big game changer as well for the road oh, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be. Uh, <clears throat> I'm excited to see how they do that. That'll be uh, really interesting how they how they do that with all the official, or if it's just going to be like a hosted setting, but. Uh, yeah, cause it'll I, be crazy when they do that. <laughs> yeah, I kind of wonder, like, are they going to do live weather to where if it's raining somewhere, it's raining there? Well, if they do live weather, weather and we go to, like, Daytona, are we going to have to wait on the rain to quit? Or are we going to have to, like, how are we going to handle that? Yeah, I mean, I, I have no clue, but uh, like I said, I'm really interested to see how iRacing is going to implement that and do a, into the racing. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. Well, yeah. again, this is the first episode of my podcast over here behind the mic with Matt. We've been on here for about, oh, 30 minutes just yakking about random stuff. And then we went into this ranking system of broadcasters mm -hmm. that somehow turned into ranking drivers. <laughs> That's how we got here. So I have a feeling I'm going to be getting a lot of messages on Facebook later tonight. Hey, man, where was I at? Well, <laughs> sorry. Not sorry. So how many leagues are you running in right now, Jared? Um, I'm just running in two right now. I'm running in the the NXIS on Monday nights, and then uh, I do the Collegiate I Racing League, which is on Tuesday nights. And uh, they're kind of on their off season right now, but starting in September, they'll uh, they'll come back and they kind of do a. Uh, it's kind of all college students or college alumni, and we all right. go out there on Tuesday nights and battle it out. Now you. Now, originally, you were going to come run Sundays, right? And then that didn't work 
out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my Sunday schedule is just so unpredictable. I didn't want to commit to the uh, to the season and then kind of let the league down if or the team down if I can show up to a to a race or something like that. So I just didn't want to go full in when i didn't know if i could do the whole season yeah and that's the hardest part like even even as a broadcaster myself picking up new leagues that's always hard right because you're trying to <laughs> trying to schedule everything out and heck you don't know what you're doing three months from now <laughs> it's hard yeah i mean and like i said i'm in college so <laughs> i mean i don't even know what like my workload is from week to week it just kind of varies and and uh you know i don't know when my exams are they just kind of pop up so uh I just didn't want to commit to something that uh, I didn't know if I could do. Yeah, that, that's the thing, right? Well, man, I appreciate you hopping on the podcast for a minute, buddy. Thank you. I uh, It was a lot of fun. 10-4, man. Well, I'll hold at you maybe uh, later on in the week or something, brother. All right, sounds good. Have a good one. Take care, Jared. You too. That was Mr. Jared Kaler, driver of the 58 machine over in the NASCAR Extreme Series. Uh deal that runs on Mondays. Well, folks, I think that's going to be about it for this podcast episode. went longer than normal. I've got to go get ready for Roval action here tonight, going racing at the Charlotte Roval. I ran a test there last night, and uh, let's just say by the time I was done running the laps, uh, my knee was killing me. I didn't hear you on Friday. I appreciate it, buddy. Appreciate it, appreciate it. Got so much going on. I appreciate that. But yeah, my knee was uh, was not feeling too well after 45 laps at the roll on the test. So I got to pilot this number one R bodies, IR body shovel away to uh, to try to go get me a victory tonight, right? I don't want to tell you where I'm at in the point standings because uh, a little bit embarrassing where I'm at right now. I may or may not be 40th after two races. I may or may not wreck the truck twice. John Sterling. All right, all right, all right. Sportscasters. I, I get that. Tell you what, if we want to talk, well, I wasn't going to stop there, but if we want to talk sportscasters, let's go Let's go to the UFC, man. What about Joe Rogan? Like, his time with the UFC back when I watched it, he did a good job. And, uh, of course, you got to go with good old JR for wrestling, WWE. Then NASCAR, I would probably put my favorite NASCAR commentator of all time, I have to go with Alan Bestwick. My favorite pit road reporter of all time, I'm going to go with uh, Jamie Little. Actually. <laughs> so, Jamie Little, Alan Bestwick, good old JR for wrestling, and Joe Logan for the UFC. There's my favorites as far as commentators. But folks, I'm going to call it quits here. And we will see you tomorrow night. Prime Grid Racing coming up. We got more coming up on Friday. I'll touch on the morning, tomorrow night. Kind of make that work out for you. And uh, maybe next week we'll get Bustle and Shelton on a podcast. Who knows? Maybe we'll get a wrestling ring out here and let some of these guys that have run-ins have a boxing match on the podcast. I think that could sell some tickets. That'll work. But you guys, thanks for coming out. Have a great evening. It's been Matt. This has been Behind the Mic. We will see you tomorrow night for our next uh, actual broadcast. Until then, stay safe, you guys. Go have a lot of fun racing, and we'll see you 